I'm Raul. Just Raul. I'm taking over from Anthony because he has to go practice with the JV basketball players and show them what it is, since he can outguard them all. Okay, this is the second part of the chapter where we're dealing with projectile motion, which pretty much takes the rest of the chapter. So really fast, some ideas. So a projectile going through the air and it's affected only by external forces like gravity. Okay, we talk about trajectory, that is the projectile's path through space. That's pretty much it. Uh, the, we don't bother with air resistance and it only comes down because of gravity. So we talked about ballistic projectiles very briefly. Okay, it's assumed only to have gravity working on it. So when we look at projectile motion, there's horizontal projections, that's the horizontal projection, okay, motion which the object is propelled initially horizontally and then allowed to fall based on gravity. So if I were to go and I have a little marble here and I launch it off, okay, it's going to take off a little bit horizontally and then gravity is going to affect it and it's going to drop. Vertical projection, when basically the object is falling because of gravity. Okay, what goes up must come down. Now, we do keep them as separate one dimensional problems, and that's why we can use the chapter three equation. So, we talked about one kind of projectile uh, motion here. This is horizontal, we are looking at the horizontal velocity, but you notice it would still keep going on straight. The problem comes down to is we have gravity, and that's what's making the object come down. That's the basics uh, for that. When we look at projectile motion, we're looking at it launched from the ground. It goes up into the air for a certain time. It reaches a certain peak, and then it comes back down. So that's another way of looking projectile motion. So you got the kind that it takes off from a cliff and goes down, or you're launching it from the ground, and you're going up. Okay, that's kind of half the fun about it. So, how can we analyze the two parts of the motion? Well, there are formulas that are useful for the vertical part, and there's a formula that's useful for the horizontal. Now, the horizontal part right here, d in the x, is equal to v in the x times delta t. Now, notice you'd say, but wait, isn't it just simply distance equals velocity times time? Yes. But we put the x there to, to tell us, hey, this is along the x-axis, okay? This is along the x-axis. This is what my coach tells the ref when the ref calls me, you know, for traveling, okay? So Luzerio throws his meaningless award off a cliff with a velocity of two meters per second. If it takes five seconds to hit the ground and shatter into many pieces, how far away did the meaningless award hit the ground from the cliff? Okay, so we have ourselves some information here. Um, let me see, hang on one second, I gotta remember if I did it. Okay, so we look at it. Now we know, so what's in the information that we have here? Well, we have a velocity of two meters per second. Now, Wait a minute, what kind of velocity is this? It's horizontal, okay? Because he's throwing it horizontally off the cliff, okay? He's throwing it horizontally off the cliff. So what happens? Well, the moment that he lets go, gravity is gonna start affecting it and it's going to go down, okay? Otherwise, horizontally, it's still traveling at two meters per second. So that means by the time it reaches down here, how fast is it traveling? Two meters per second, horizontally. What is interrupting its path? The gravity when it brings it to the ground. Now we've been given the time. It said five seconds to hit the ground. All right, so this is a great way of finding our horizontal part here. We have our velocity of two meters per second, okay? And we have five seconds of time. But wait, that's the delta t. Right, we're assuming that our starting time is zero, okay? 
So five seconds minus zero seconds gets us five. That's our delta t. Okay. So now we can plug that in. So two times five, and that gives us. Okay. Let's see. Two meters per second multiplied by five seconds. Notice how the seconds cancel out, so I am left with a distance in meters. Two times five is ten meters away from the cliff. Yeah, isn't that sweet? So, remember, the idea about problem solving is being able to analyze. Use your critical thinking skills. That's what you need to do. Now, I have to check here and... Okay. We're doing great. I have to pay attention to my time, folks. All right. So this is the important thing here. So we have a horizontal formula, which seems to be pretty easy, very straightforward. The tricky part is looking at the vertical. Now, in the vertical, there's three formulas we can take advantage of here. These are the exact same formulas I'm going to give you on the exam, OK? So you'll have these. Now, I also broke it down as to what do they mean? Because if you don't know the difference between V2 and the X and V2 and the Y, that's going to be a problem. That's going to hinder you. So for this one, V2 in the Y direction is equal to gravity in the Y direction times time. Now, the idea is this. We're trying to find the velocity of the object just as it hits the ground because when it starts at the top, it's at zero. Gravity is taken over. It's speeding it up, speeding it up, speeding it up, speeding it up. It's at its fastest just before it hits the ground. It's at its fastest before it impacts. So if we know the speed, we know our velocity, guys, we know the gravity, then we can find the time. How long did it take for it to come down? Now, what if I don't know the velocity? I don't know the velocity, but I have time and I have gravity, and I need to know how far the object has fallen. Okay? Well, there's distance in the y direction. It is equal to 1 half times the acceleration due to gravity times delta t squared. Again, delta t. Don't get tripped out on it. Remember, t is at initial t is at zero seconds. And our final t is however long it takes for the object to hit the ground. But that gives us how far did the object fall. Now, what happens if you don't have time? We have a distance, OK, uh, but we don't have the time. We were not given the time whatsoever. And that's where this formula is going to come in. When you have an initial downward velocity and you don't have the time, OK? So this is a very useful thing to have for us as well. So dy is equal to v2 in the y direction squared divided by 2g in the y. Okay? And you'd say, canoe, isn't 2g, isn't g and g in the y the same thing? Yes, yes, it is. Um, I'm doing it the way that the book is doing it so that you guys, when you refer to the book, you'll recognize it immediately. Okay? All right, let's take a look here. Okay. Well, I'm afraid now varsity basketball practice is coming up for me. So I'm Raul. I'm going to have to sign off, and I'm going to have to hand this one over to another player. It's been fun working with you guys. Take it easy, and remember, go Lancers.